Okay, so let's have a look at this cool utility called desktops.exe. It's running over here in my taskbar. You can see this right now. So, um, if I just open the options of this particular utility. So basically, desktops enables you to have four virtual desktops. It can always be four. It cannot be less than that or it cannot be more than that. Okay, when you launch desktops.exe uh, for the first time, if you have not clicked on a particular desktop other than your primary desktop, that won't be generated per se. So what that means is that it doesn't exist in the memory inside your RAM because you have still not clicked there. But once you click there, that's when it generates. And then you can uh, quickly switch between virtual desktops every now and then. Um, one limitation is then you can always have four, you will always have four virtual desktops or you can always have a max of four virtual desktops. The other limitation is that if on one particular desktop one application is running, say for example if on desktop 1 I have uh, Firefox running and if I go to desktop 2 and I try to run Firefox over there it won't start up straight away. Um, that's because the process is already running in the background so unless Firefox allows two completely different processes inside the RAM. Remember, I'm talking about two processes. I'm not talking about two Firefox windows. I'm talking about two completely different processes. So unless an application allows two completely different processes, you won't be able to load up them on different desktops. And you can always have only one instance of a particular process. So it, it doesn't just apply to Firefox. It applies to tons of other applications as well. So you can give it a shot. Um, okay, and uh, so you can see over here I have four different desktops right now. Now, if I go to the second desktop or the third or the fourth one, um, you won't be able to see this is the limitation with Camtasia recording that I'm using to record this particular video. Um, the recording only shows the primary desktop. Again, that is because this application is running and is linked to the primary desktop, not to the other desktops. That's why it doesn't show up over there. That's why I'm not going to go there um, because it just won't, you, you just can't see it. You'll always see this particular screen. I What I suggest you is you go ahead, get this utility. Um, to get this utility, you can simply type in, it says www.sysinternals.com. So just go to www.sysinternals.com. That will just straight away take you to Microsoft's website because sysinternals is now bought by Microsoft. It is now known as Windows Sys Internals. So you can go over here. Um, the utility that we are talking about today is this one, desktops. You can open this screen, uh, this particular link, I'm sorry, and you can read more about it over here. You can have some go through on it, how the a small sort of, sort of detail into the technicals behind it. And um, you can actually download the entire suite. Uh, so Sys Internals is available as the entire suite. It has Tons of applications. This, these are the list of it built into this suite. So you can download the entire suite, it's just 13 MB in a zip file, and that should get you going. Once you download the suite, uh, extract the suite and uh, the applications from the suite, and then just run the application by double clicking it. There's no installation required for this. So that's pretty much it for this particular video. Um, Select desktop shows the desktops and okay, obviously I can set the shortcuts. So if I have alt number one, two, three, four, that means if I press alt one, I'll be on my desktop one. Alt two will take me to desktop two, three to three and four to four. I can change the shortcuts. I can make it alt control, not just alt. I can make it alt control shift or I can just say control or control shift or shift windows and then one, two, three, four, whichever way, different permutations and combinations of these buttons along with the numbers or the function keys are possible. You can also set it to run automatically at logon time so that whenever I start my system, I start my Windows 7, um, this particular application runs with it. I don't want to do that, that's why I'm not going to do that. So that's what, that was it for this particular video guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.